Hi, Sam here again with the Bluegrass Martial Arts in Louisville, Kentucky with our uh, Scholar and Warrior series. Last time we met we were talking about uh, the demand God has placed on us to uh, protect, to keep His created order. So this time, following up with that, we're going to look like, or we're going to look at what it looks like when we fail in that task. Uh, what are the results of failing in the task of doing what God has instructed us to do when it comes to creation and, and being the uh, protectors of the sanctity of life, protectors of the image of God. So, the text we're looking at today is a little bit longer. It's in uh, Genesis again, chapter 4, right? So we are going to see the story today of Cain and Abel. So chapter 4 reads, Now the man had relations with his wife Eve, and she conceived and gave birth to Cain. And she said, I have gotten a man-child with the help of the Lord. Again she gave birth to his brother Abel. And Abel was a, a keeper of flocks, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. So it came about in the course of time that Cain brought an offering to the Lord of the fruit of the ground, and Abel on his part also brought the firstlings of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and for his offering, but for Cain and for his offering he had no regard. So Cain became very angry, and his countenance fell. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door, and its desire is for you, but you must master it. Cain told Abel his brother, and it came about when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother? A where is Abel your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? He said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. Now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you cultivate the ground, it will no longer yield its strength to you. You will be a vagrant and a wanderer on the earth. So, we have here the first story, uh, or the story of the first murder, in this case. It is a brother killing a brother here. So, um, on, on top of that, uh, I have heard a lot of times spoken in, in terms of uh, why did God accept one offering and not the other? And it had to do completely with their state of mind. Why were they bringing an offering to God in the first place? Uh, because but God makes it clear that uh, offerings of uh, first fruit in grains, um, that he accept those offerings, that those offerings please, please God. So it didn't have anything to do with the fact that one of them um, raised grain and fruit and the other one raised cattle. Uh, it, it wasn't about that. It had more to do with how they came to God to present their offerings. And that is even more made evident by what the response is when one offering is accepted and the other one is refused. Cain obviously, in his motive behind giving an offering to God, had nothing to do with what is supposed to be the motive when you give an offering to God, but instead, what will be the reward? He wanted the prestige. He wanted uh, the honor that came from giving a reward to God, as opposed to why we are motivated to give to God in the first place. Right? We are created for good works, and it is good works to turn and give back to God portions of that which he's supplied us. But if in turn of giving to God your only reason for doing that is because you expect something in return, then your, um, your expectations put you in the wrong place. It's not really an offering at that point. You again are attempting to put God somehow in your debt, and that can't be done, right? There's no way to put God into your debt. And that's kind of what Cain feels like he's done in this, in this uh, instance. He's given this offering, it's been rejected, and he feels like because God has rejected, uh, rejected his offering, which had more to do with his state of mind, um, that he's been rejected in the process. Uh, going beyond that, when uh, he reaches the point where he is um, angry enough that he will kill his own brother, and he does that through deceit. Then God comes searching. Uh, God, of course, isn't actually asking when he asks the question, where's your brother? Um, he's, he's not 
uh, seeking information. That's not an informational question there. If God is all that God knows and is everywhere, all-knowing and all-powerful, then uh, he would have been well aware of what Cain was up to. Uh, he would have been aware to the point where he could have stopped him before he did that. Uh, but he chooses not to act until after the fact, and he comes to Cain saying, where's your brother? So the question isn't a question seeking information. Um, it's more seeking a confession. And Cain's response then uh, to say, where, where is my brother's keeper? When I was younger, I'm, I'm the oldest in my family. And um, the tradition that we grow up in in our household is that there's expectations on the firstborn that uh, aren't shared necessarily by the ones that follow. So if uh, my brother and sister got into anything, they would get into trouble, right? They were expected to be responsible for, um, for their actions. But I got in trouble also because I was expected as the oldest to be the one that, that was the role model, that, um, that was kind of the, the parent when the parents weren't around. And I should have stopped them doing whatever they were doing, or I should not have encouraged them to do whatever it is that they got into trouble. Or if they went missing, if, if my parents couldn't find them, you know, that they would raise the question, where's your brother, where's your sister, right? And my answer, thinking I was so smart, would be to say, I don't know, am I my brother's keeper, right? That, it's in the Bible, right? That, that's that's got to be a, a good answer. It's in the Bible. No, this is one of those cases where um, there, there isn't, it isn't clearly written out that way. You don't get that, certainly when you read English. But um, when God comes to Cain and he asks the question, where is your brother? And Cain's response is, I, I don't know, am I my brother's keeper? Is It's kind of like that moment of silence when someone has just asked the stupidest question and you don't want to dignify it with an actual answer. Like that was the dumbest, are you kidding me? Are you your brother's keeper? Not only is the answer in this instance, yes, you are your brother's keeper. You are always your brother's keeper, right? That's what we talked about in our last lesson, that, that we carry the responsibility of the people around us, our family, uh, younger brothers and sisters, whatever it is, that those, those relationships that look up to us, we hold a responsibility there to those relationships. And not only has Cain failed miserably in his task as Abel's older brother to be his keeper, as he was called to be, um, but the very blood is crying up from the ground. So God's, when, when you read this, you've got to hear the voice. And, and the voice behind the passage um, is, is that sense of, how could you even ask such a question? Yes, you are your brother's keeper. Your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground over what you have just done here. That, that, that's the level of, of uh, uh, despair when we fail, when we fail at our task of recognizing that we are image bearers. And, and not only in this case has Cain failed in seeing that he is an image bearer and his brother is an image bearer, uh, he has in turn attacked and destroyed the image of God that his brother bears. And, and as the blood cries up from the ground for vengeance in, in this instance, it is crying for the justice of God because it, has, it is an image. God's image has been destroyed in this matter. And there's something unjust in that, right? The blood cries to God. So that, that's the danger here. When we don't take the task of what it means to be an image bearer, what it means to protect that image of God in the relationships that we have around us, um, the, it only took one relationship, right? It, there's Adam and Eve, and then immediately after that, there's Cain and Abel, and we have this story here, right? It's Genesis chapter 4, <laughs> So it's early, early, early on when we fail at the task of keeping that that will degrade and digress quickly, downward spiral into um, ultimately destroying the image of God as it appears in those relationships around us. So a uh, very, very important thing to, to take that uh, seriously. And that's why that's a calling for me here at the... Um, uh, Bluegrass Martial Arts, 
um, that Kimpo Karate for Christ is a system from its very design uh, as I helped to take the parts of the Kimpo, both American and traditional systems, and bring them together. Uh, to bring them together in such a way, to engineer it in such a way that we are always seeking after the image of God. As image God, of God, as we bear that image, and as someone who comes after us is bearing that image as well, uh, that we seek to um, be able to resolve, um, we may have to use force, may have to use violence to uh, resolve a violent situation, but, but to be able to do so in a manner that um, brings order into chaos, and um, resolves the situation with min minimal damage to the image of God that they bear. So again, my name is Sam. Um, that's my calling. That's my passion here at uh, Bluegrass Martial Arts. Hope uh, if you're in the Louisville area that you'll come check us out. Certainly uh, be glad to see you. Be glad to meet you. Come meet us. Meet the community of people here that uh, train at this facility. And... Um, uh, Feel free to come on in anytime. We uh, we don't do contracts. We uh, we do free first trial class. So uh, again, I I hope I'll see you soon.